To wrap up the 100 series, we're going to put everything together and work with a new expression. To begin, I'm going to find the property that I'm going to work with and add an expression. So in this case, I'm going to highlight the planet layer and hit S on my keyboard to open up scale. And I'm going to add a new expression. So by default, an expression will already be highlighted here in the expression window and it links to itself, so nothing will change. Now with this expression highlighted, I'm going to use the expression language menu to build an expression. So we can see what we're doing. I'm just going to hit tilde on my keyboard to open it up full screen. And now I'm going to go highlight the expression again. And I'm going to hit the arrow key here on the expression language menu. Now this is going to open up all the categories. For this example, I'm going to be looking in the interpolation category, and more specifically, the linear method, which has five arguments. So by clicking this, it's going to replace the default selected text here in my expression window, and it's going to give me five placeholder arguments that need to be edited. So now I'm going to click away and hit tilde again to collapse this. And now I'm going to use the pick whip tool to replace the T argument with a property. But in order to do that, the property has to be visible on the timeline. So with the planet layer selected, I'm going to hold Shift T to open up Opacity. And I'm going to go back to my expression, and I'm going to highlight T. And I'm going to grab the Pick Whip tool and drag it down to Opacity and Release. And this is going to replace T with Transform.Opacity. Now that I've connected properties and values to the expression, I can edit the inline code within the window to create more complex functionality. So the first thing that needs to happen is to make linear a variable, and we'll go over variables later in the course. So in this case, I'm going to use my fade equals, and I'm going to add a semicolon to the end. And this is going to create a reference that we can reference later. Next, I'm going to select T min, which is the minimum input value, and I'm going to change that to 0. And I'm going to select T max, and I'm going to change it to 100. And the reason for these two numbers is because opacity ranges from 0 to 100 as our input, and it's going to remap them to value 1 and 2 for our scale value. So for value 1, I'm going to change this to 80 scale, and then value 2, I'm just going to leave this at 100 scale for now. So the next step, I'm going to come to the end of the semicolon, and I'm going to hit enter to create a new line. And on this next line, I'm going to create a three dimensional array using the my fade variable. So I'm going to type my fade, comma, my fade, comma, my fade. And this is going to map the my fade linear function to all three scale positions for our 3D layer. So now if I click off, it's going to save our changes. And you'll notice that nothing's changed yet because our input is still at 100, but we're going to change that next. So now I'm going to try adding another expression with a keyboard shortcut instead. So if I come down and highlight opacity in the timeline, and I'm going to use shift alt equals or shift option equals on a Mac, this is the keyboard shortcut for adding an expression to a highlighted property. So for the opacity property, I'm going to use the expression language menu again. I'm going to come down to interpolation, but this time I'm going to use an ease method with five arguments. So if I click that, it's going to replace what we had originally. And I'm going to come in and manually add these parameters. So I'm going to change T to time as our input. I'm going to change T min to something called endpoint, which is going to reference the endpoint of our layer. And then I'm going to come over and change T max to endpoint again. But this time, I'm going to add one second to that value. And then finally, I'm going to come to value 1, and I'm going to make it 0. And then value 2 is going to become 100. Essentially, what this ease method is saying is map 0 to 100 opacity value from the layer's endpoint to one second past the endpoint. Now let's see this in action. I'm going to hit tilde to collapse this back. And you'll notice the planet has disappeared because we're at the layer's endpoint. But if I scrub in time from 0 to 1 second, you'll notice that not only does the opacity go from 0 to 100 across that time, but the scale actually goes from 80 to 100 across that same time. This is because the ease method is driving our initial animation from 0 to 1 second, 0 to 100 opacity, and then this is using that animation as a reference for its own. 
So now that I have expressions applied to multiple layers, I can view how those values are changing over time using the post expression graph. So first I need to come into the graph editor by clicking this icon. And I can then come down to each of my expressions and toggle the post expression graph. So here we see opacity with this blue color mapped from zero to 100 and uses this nice ease animation curve. You'll also notice that scale X, Y, and Z are all mapped with these colors and they're kind of stacked here on the same plane, but basically they're following the same ease curve that the opacity is because of their reference. All right, so now it's time for a quick bonus. We're gonna add an expression controller. So with the same planet layer selected, I'm gonna add an expression control from effect, expression control, slider control. And I'm gonna rename this planet scale. The next thing I'm gonna do is change this quickly to 50 so that we have an initial value that's not zero. Now, once this is done, I'm gonna come down to the planet layer and select the scale expression, specifically the 80 value, which is the fourth argument in this linear method. And this is the initial scale value, which I'm going to now pick whip to the planet scale slider. So as you can see, it's replaced 80 with effect planet scale slider, which references this property. So if I click off the expression window to save my changes, you'll notice that nothing's happened because we're in we're at one second in time. But if I scrub this back in time, you'll notice the planet now starts at 50 instead of 80. And that's because the planet scale is the new reference here instead of the hard-coded 80 value we had before. So if I change this planet scale back to zero and I ran preview, the planet scales from zero instead of 50. We've arrived at the end of lesson 106, adding a new expression, editing the expression's code, using the expression language menu, and viewing the post expression graph. If you enjoy this expressions course, consider purchasing the paid content. It includes in-depth documentation, extra tutorial content, high definition videos, and all the project files used in the training. Your purchase will help to create more free courses like this in the future.